Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be with you here again, this time with no other than Roberto Faldini, discussing corporate governance and TOC. Faldini is one of the Brazil's most influential board members, the founder of IBGC, and a significant contributor to the development of corporate governance. Please, Faldini, tell us, tell our listeners a little more about yourself. Welcome. Welcome. It's a pleasure, Aurio, to be with you and to have this opportunity to, to share uh, my, my my life and my experience in, in, in corporate governance and uh, business administration. Uh, I, I, as you said, I was one of the founders of IBGC uh, in 1995, exactly because uh, uh, I was facing some problems in, in, in boards that I were already uh, in working. And uh, we wanted to improve corporate governance. I, I remember that in 1995, the word corporate governance this is, this, this isn't, it wasn't existing, uh, did not exist. And uh, only on the 2000, around 2000, 2000 and something, that the corporate governance name came uh, to 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 everybody to to face the administration, a better administration uh, of the companies, uh, public companies or private companies that are were always looking how to improve all the problems. Uh, all the constraints, if I can use this word, yeah. uh, that yeah. we have as as board members and uh, as uh, businessmen. So uh, uh, I went to 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 look for my uh, my teacher, and and uh, he said that he and uh, a teacher of the seventies uh, that was a specialist in corporate governance or in, in family business. Uh, and uh, I told him that I was facing some kind of problem. And he said, why you don't join us? We are founding now the Instituto Brasileiro of uh, uh, Conselhos de Administração, ou seja, Instituto Brasileiro of Boards. And, uh, and I joined them. And, and since then, I'm always working with other companies uh, uh, to try to improve better governance in 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 all these companies. So, mm -hmm. uh, in in my uh, official way to 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 work, let's say, I, I I always say that I am a fireman because I'm always trying to to avoid fires in the companies, fires between the shareholders. So I'm a farm. I am a locksmith because I'm opening a lot of doors around the world because it's very important to, to open doors for the companies, for new business, for uh, sharing information and so on and so forth. And I also am a seamstress or, or a tailor because I'm always looking to, to, to make the, what is necessary to, to, uh, to the companies and to the families to to achieve their goals. And last but not least, I'm a, I'm a cotton between crystals because you know <laughs> mainly in family business uh, uh, there is always something that can uh, prejudice uh, the not not be not leaving the company to to go ahead in what is the main purposes of the company. So with mm -hmm. that, I'm, I'm working in many boards. I already passed around three, 30 or 40 boards in my life oh. and, and, and uh, since the, the 90s. And, and uh, nowadays I'm in some boards and trying to help them to, 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 to build the road for the future. And uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure to help people uh, and to help companies and to help uh, businessmen to find the right way to the future. So this is an overall picture of myself. 
But uh, share a little your background as well. I know you had a story, right? In family business, you learn in the practical, not only going to courses, right? Tell a little about it. Yeah. Well, uh, I, 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 I am a business administrator. I have my degree in the Fundação Getúlio Vargas here in Brazil. And after that, uh, I uh, went to uh, many courses in, in Brazil and abroad, uh, uh, specializing uh, more and more in, 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 in business and corporate governance and uh, general administration. So I went to INSEAD in Fontainebleau and in, in France. I went to Babson College in, in uh, about emprendedorism in, in, in Boston. Uh, I went to IFC to many courses there. And I, I'm traveling all around the world, uh, visiting uh, universities and uh, schools of business administration and corporate governance. Uh, to try to understand more and more what's going on because it's 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 it's, it's a process. Uh, governance, corporate governance, is a process. It's not something that you go in and start and and, and finish. You have all the time improvements to be done in the company. So mm -hmm. that's my my background. Uh, personally, of course, uh, I, I'm living here in Brazil, but uh, I have. Uh, my two of my my sons and uh, one son and one daughter abroad so i visit them uh, uh, i have my grandchildren uh, two in israel two in, in in florida and then i have some here also so it's it's a it's a wonderful life to to have the opportunity to work and to visit the son and daughter and the grandchildren and and learning all the time you know? that's great and you know, I met Faldino the first time in a, in a certification process I was doing. I also work with board of directors in many opportunities in the past. Uh, but, uh, you know, I need to be honest, Faldino, in this specific course was a small course, okay? But with a very good team, Faldino was one of the speakers. I never forgot what you said about the diligence, right? The importance in the board of directors member role. I learned a lot with Vanderlei Passarella, common friend. And, you know, I changed, I changed a little my mindset. What is really the role of a board of directors member? So, Faldino, in, in your opinion, especially in this new world now, after pandemic, all the disruptions in the customs, in the war, etc., cetera. And uh, I mean, I remember we also say all the time, uh, um it's a journey, right? So in this journey, what's changing? In your opinion, what is new nowadays? Well, uh, if uh, what's going on is now that everybody's talking about ESG, uh, but it's something that already was in the mind of some people, of some companies, mm -hmm. or some businessmen, but not so uh, strong as it's now. Uh, so, uh, environment, social responsibility, and governance are tied together. You cannot uh, uh, look only in one and leave in the other uh, without uh, taking and uh, paying attention for them. Uh, in, 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 in corporate governance, I say that you need, uh, in, in administrating our companies, you need to I have uh, the three Bs, the back to core, uh, the back to basic, and the back to ethics. So if you look to the core business, the, the basic and the ethics, ESG is something that is in our front. Nobody can uh, be uh, calm and uh, not looking for these uh, important issues, because if not, the companies will not survive. And the family that are owning the company will not survive. Uh, I, I remember uh, in the 50s and the 60s about quality. Everybody at that time were, was very uh, apprehensive uh, about quality to, to put in the companies 
managing quality, uh, have the, in, on the lines, uh, on, on, not on the lines, on and special uh, supervision of quality. Today, nobody talks anymore about quality. Or you have, or you are out. And for me, ESG is the same thing. If you don't have responsibility, social responsibility, if you don't have ethical responsibility, if you don't have uh, uh, responsibility of what's going on in, in, in the environment experts, uh, you will not survive. And all of that are circumvented by the governance. Governance is the main issue that will rule mm -hmm. what you are going to do in your company in, in, to, to, to go back to, to core business, to back go to, to back to basic and to back to, to ethics. So mm -hmm. uh, in some years from now, nobody will talk anymore about ESG because that will be something that will be absolutely uh, in the companies if they want to survive. Uh, you know what? But talk about ESG, that uh, for sure is a good thing. One of the good things that happened in, in the last years. I don't know, but uh, sometimes people are using this ESG idea just as a marketing, right? Doing things, not really thinking the consequences of the actions, right? And uh, beyond this, I believe ESG is not only a responsibility of the company to the society, it's also an opportunity. For example, right? Now, no, living in the US and uh, enjoying my or these two different cultures simultaneously, right? I think a board of directors, uh, when you talk about diversity in a board of directors, it's not to only a matter to get minorities there in the board, as I mean, in order to increase the, you know, the chances to other people from these minorities. It's not an opportunity. You know, because, for example, uh, I saw there in the U.S., right, uh, board of directors with other cultures in sight helps the company to better understand the multicultural world, the business arena that is more and more intricate with values for all the, all the parties simultaneously. Does it make sense to you this, Eugenie? Absolutely, absolutely, Aurelio. Uh, uh, as you said, it's a lot of greenwashing around this world about ESG, but uh, more and more the companies, the board members and the executive team uh, are seeing, as they saw in the past about uh, quality, that if you don't have quality, you are out of the market. If you don't have the right uh, responsibility, social responsibility, uh, looking about what's environment and to have the diversity in the company, not only in the board, but also in the executive. And diversity is not male and female, it's all the cultures that you have, mainly if you are a multinational company. I saw some companies that uh, never had a woman in the board and they were selling clothes for women. Uh, how can the men understand uh, what's good for the woman or not? So uh, uh, it's not a question of being uh, to have the equality between men and human and, and women, but it's the importance of the different thinking, and that's yeah. why diversity is important. And who will understand that earlier will have the benefits. So in this world, everything can be a problem or everything can be an opportunity. It depends on how the board jointly with the executive find the way and means to improve better, better companies towards the future. Uh, I'm convinced of that. Many of the people that I'm working with are convinced of that. But of course, there are always some people that don't understand and, and, and or try to don't understand or don't want to understand uh, if you go to the 19th century and uh, 18th century, uh, slavery was something common, normal. Uh, after a period, 
the society as a whole, uh, as a total, understand that this that's not uh, not good. It's it is it's not good. Not acceptable. For the, acceptable. So yeah. today, only cr criminals are uh, uh, using uh, slavery. You know, slaves in, in, in to work about that. And the, the same thing with with our companies and our families. It's important to have the diversity to find the best way because this world is a world of the diversity. How you can manage your company uh, without taking care or paying attention what's going on in the world? Mm -hmm. Good point. Yeah, sure. And um, no, when I met Ellie. I was uh, working in a big project in a big Brazilian corporation, but uh, at the same time, I was in two board of directors of medium-sized, you know, companies. One uh, was a shoe producer in Rio Grande do Sul, another was a plastic product producer in Santa Catarina. And I went to Israel with these two companies to know Eli, you know, uh, allowing these companies to know what still see our approach, etc. At that time. And it was starting to formalize what you call today the viable vision. Viable vision is a plan, is a vision, right? But it's also viable. And uh, it, he summarized at that time in 2005, 2005, 2010, I don't remember exactly, okay? The two major goals. And the goal of TLC bring it to the camp was to allow the company to enjoy simultaneously growth, Instability and harmony. Growth in the TOC terms is about to have a competitive edge. And it comes when you have a real value delivery to the market, uh, to your clients. Okay, that is a special way to do that. But also, we don't need only to grow, we need to grow with stability, process, robustness, okay, organization in the company. But not less important, since the time Alice was talking about it, is harmony. And harmony means, you know, that value is supposed to be to all shareholders, to the clients, to the supplier, to the society, to the employees, right? So, was, as you said, ESG is not necessarily new. What is really new is the awareness about it. And now it's putting everybody looking for it, right? But this is just an introduction to ask you, you know, uh, I'm... I, uh, I believe we start a, a, a bigger relationship. We start talking more after you listen a podcast when I was talking about the design, strategic design, business design. And in that podcast, I explained in a little uh, deeper the principles of TOC. And then we start to talk, right? So, Fajini, share with uh, our listeners, please, what got your attention? Uh, attention? What is What touched you? In the TLC, uh, in governments, I mean. Exactly, because it's a thinking process. Uh, 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 the theory of constraints is a thinking process that can be applied to corporate governance uh, and also to the manage the board management. So uh, uh, that was that called my attention because uh, as we have uh, in our day, day by day, Sometimes you are looking uh, for the solution of what already happened and not what is causing what happened. So that's the, the, the main point that I saw uh, that uh, give me, uh, uh, that recognized the, important, the importance of, of, the, of TOC uh, because improve decision-making and uh, all the performance of our organizations, uh, because it's providing, if I can say, a, a systematic approach, uh, how to, to identify and how to address constraints. Uh, that was the, the main uh, purpose that uh, Eli, uh, when he studied and, and created this theory, uh, put on the table, and that's why uh, I, I like it very much because sometimes we need to go 
to exactly back to basics and to see what's going on to avoid problems in the future uh, and to 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 be able to uh, improve uh, our decision making uh, in the problems that are causing in our companies uh, and for that it's it's very simple but very very complicated at the same time it's very simple because mm -hmm. you need to identify the goal where, where i'm going where I, I what i need to 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 go a, ahead and then try to identify the constraints and not always the constraints are on on, on the table that you can see you have a feeling but you need to go deep to to try to understand what are the the real constraints that you have uh, and then to try to 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 exploit and elevate these constraints uh, to to see how uh, you can leverage them uh, how you can correct them and then also it's very important uh, because you have also non constraints uh, that sometimes are so strong uh, that are they they jeopardize the possibility of correcting uh, the to issue this constraints. So you need to subordinate the non-constraints to avoid that they will uh, not allow you to go uh, where you want to, to, to go. And um, it's all about focus, right? I think we can take for where you said as well, right? Uh, the focus process, you know, in order to avoid the illusion of progress, improving something that's not really important to the company goal. And that's a, that's a mission that I believe the board of directs needs to be involved in, right? Helping the company, the management, the CEO, the C-level, putting focus in the right thing. Makes sense to you? No doubt, no doubt. If you want to resolve a problem, you need to go very deep and to focus on that. If you have a uh, you don't have this uh, this uh, philosophy, if I can say, to go deep and focus. You'll never find the solution. Mm -hmm. And also, you, you mentioned and I like it as well. Thinking process helping to have a systemic view. You know, two days ago I was in New York in a big corporation, and they started a project of us using the TOC thinking process to help in a specific thing. Imagine a big corporation. They have regional goals, right? The budget by region in the world. It's inevitable many times. However, also many times it creates a lot of dilemmas, right? Different people, different moments with different tools defining, trying to align the incentive systems to reach the global maximum in the company. It's not easy. And uh, let me share an example with you, Falgini, and I'd like to see your opinion about this kind of subject. Also in not so big companies, I'm a Brazilian client, okay, less than 1 billion wheels, less than $200 million that uh, has production and retail as well. Okay, and in the board of directors, a new board member that came from the retail, um, a very good guy, experienced. He asked, no, no, you know what? We need to have two separate PL because we need to see if the retail is effective, can live for themselves. What's the TOC approach to that? Yes, we need to see the performance of all parts of the systems. However, you know, to, to split results by departments, by even business units, many times it's just a matter of playing allocation games or even worse, to define transfer pricing that do not really help the company to see the global maximum. Makes sense to you, this comment, Fogini? No doubt, no doubt. Uh, it's another good example how you need to have uh, uh, the opportunity to look deep and to try to separate what's important that it's not important. You need to have the information, of course, uh, very detailed information, but you uh, you don't need to, uh, uh, to, 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 how we say, to, to avoid 
to understand what are the constraints that gave us the opportunity to grow here and there. So uh -huh. it's important to analyze that and to have all the information they have to have a good decision. Mm -hmm. And uh, I bring now something that I think it's polemic because many, you know, they find uh, the sea level needs to take care about short-term issues. But the board of directors needs to take care about long term issues. Okay. And that's what you call it, you see, another dilemma. In our opinion, many times it's not so precise, right? It's sometimes, especially now in this new world, right? The board of directors needs to be really involved in some current crisis that can affect some current decisions, decisions in short term, but it can affect the future of the company deeply. And sometimes we really need this sea level. Especially, and I have a, you know, I have an opinion about the relationship between the board of directors and the CEO, especially when it's he's the founder. It, we need, in my opinion, we need to respect a lot the intuition of the guy that you know created the company, people that are daily involved in in, in the business itself, right? So it sometimes it makes all the sense. They really decide about the long term as well. So in my opinion, Faldini, there is no uh, golden rule to split long term and short term activities. Make sense to you this observation? No doubt about that. Listen, uh, when you drive in a, in a dark road, uh, you need to have the two lights, the lights that you can see the horizon, and the lights that you can, need to see the holes that are in the in the road. So I like it. It, it. It's not possible to run a company if you don't look the long term, but you cannot avoid to see what's going in the short term. So as you said, it's not a golden rule. It's not a receipt uh, that are good for all the companies and all the the boards, but uh, a common sense. Uh, 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 again, back to basic and uh, 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 and to the core. When you have a goal, you need to see where you are going, but you need to see also the holes that in front of you to be able to maintain the course towards the the goal. Mm -hmm. and so, uh, so only completing. So it's very important to have the information on the hand. Sometimes it's very difficult to have them, but it's important. Intuition, no doubt, is one of very strong uh, weapons uh, to solve or to, to give the goal. Uh, but also you need to be prepared to, uh, uh, to, to jump the, the obstacles that are in your short term to uh, arrive to the long term. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you are talking with about the governance, right, and people that leave governance in the daily basis, usually we talk only about the bright side of the government. But, you know, I, I saw some negative issues as well in the past. For example, I can say this because a really, really old project, right? In the hospital, a big hospital, I was a consultant at the time. I was not in the board, right? And they created a really good board, especially in Brazil, because, you know, we need to understand the government, the rules, things like that. And there were really good guys in the board. However, Paul Gini, at that time, uh, the board meetings were uh, monthly. But in order to prepare the monthly meetings, the sea level at least one week per month was totally involved in the meeting preparation, which means 25% of the management of the C-level was totally driven to the board of directors meeting. In my opinion, it happens frequently, right? And instead of to be something that is helping the C-level to really accelerate, expedite decision is blocking it. Makes sense to you this critic? Uh, yes, it makes sense, no doubt. Uh, listen, uh, what can we 
say, if we want to uh, achieve a goal, as we were saying before, it's important to see the long run and to see the short run. But one of the most important uh, points that is necessary to pay attention is the, the good relations between the board and yeah. the sea level because they are working together. Of course, different uh, responsibilities, but in the end of the road, on the end of the day, all of us need to look at the future of the company. So if you don't have this, I would word, uh, liaison uh, uh, between the board and uh, the executive team, uh, you'll never find a good solution for the future. Uh, and that's also a point that the th theory of constraints, you can look how is you can uh, uh, permit, allow that this liaison goes well. Uh, another point that you mentioned about monthly uh, meetings here in Brazil, it's very, very often and very common that we have monthly meetings. In the States, it's not so often. There are four, mm -hmm. uh, normally speaking, the, the meetings are four meetings a year, quarter meetings and so quarter, on. So yeah. on. Uh, uh, mainly to the, to the public companies. But I, in my opinion, uh, if you want to go deep in the company, uh, it's worse to be a little bit more close to the company because it's the way that you can have the opportunity to discuss, to go deep in some points. When you have only quarter meetings, uh, it's not, in my opinion, I respect, of course, the, the way it means of the states and some other countries, but uh, I believe that it's very important to have more meetings and, of course, not disturbing the sea level uh, to avoid uh, the, the, that they leave the, the day by day uh, behind and go only to attend what the, go, or the board is asking. No, yeah. it must be a good sense to have the information that the executive uh, team are having and are using, the board can use the same. Sometimes one or other thing additional, but it's not to, the board is not to, to, to stay in the company, to go to the company, to, to <clears throat> disturb the day by day of the company. It's only to have an orientation towards the goal in the future. Uh, I completely agree. Last year, I was participating in a board of directors in a company in Nashville, a small company, not a startup, but it's still small, a family business company. And uh, you change it to monthly meetings because it was impossible to really follow, you know, the crazy times post pandemic of all the problems in the US with the quarterly meeting was impossible. I completely agree with you. But by the way, talking about a uh, family business, is there a golden rule? to decide when to start to have a more formal governance, to, to invest in the board of directors? What do you think about it? Uh, uh, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting point because uh, sometimes I hear now the cost of having a board is, yep. is, is a high cost. But I ask always, what's the cost of not having a board? And there is sometimes that you cannot see very well what is important to have an, uh, an opportunity, uh, a sounding board to discuss the main issues that you have in the company with people that are not involved in the day by day. Uh, uh, they have a, a broader vision of what, what's going on and can with the experience of other companies to, of course, always with with the ethic principles, no, no doubt about that. Nobody's going to tell things from one company to the other. No, but the, the, the experience is very important sure. to share. And that's why the board are important. And to have independent board members is also a very, very important issue to help the companies. Uh, I, I, since I'm, I, I was a board member of my family of 
bought the family car, company. But after we sold the, our company to a multinational, I began to, to, to work professionally in, in, in some boards. And now, as I said, uh, almost 40 or companies that already uh, went uh, to, to, to serve as board member. And uh, I arrived to uh, a, a conclusion uh, that the, the value of our lives is not determined by what we do for ourselves. The value of our lives is determined by what we do for others. And the board members has to have that in mind, how to help the companies, how to help the families, how to help the, 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 the management to go ahead towards the future. Yeah, that's it. Sure. You know, uh, another guy that I admire a lot is Flavio Rocha, you know, the chairman of Riachuelo. I worked with him. You know, in the family board, sometime in, in the company as a consultant. And Flavio used to say, when you are really young, you think in yourself. When you are middle age, you're thinking of family. But when you become older, you're thinking, what's my legacy to the society? So you change your way to see the world, right? I think it's what you are talking about, right? No doubt, no doubt. <laughs> uh. So, Paulini, uh, and now beyond the, the, the TOC, you know, insights that you shared here, for those that are more experienced as board of directors, what is the state of art nowadays? Which kind of, you know, other books or <coughs> knowledge or sources of knowledge you can uh, recommend? Uh, first of all, is to, to have the basic principles that the corporate governance respect the basic principles are very simple transparency accountability social responsibility and of course uh, a very 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 important is to have the opportunity to uh, 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 find uh, uh, the corporate responsibility corporate responsibility means environment means social aspects and means the responsibility of the company the people that are working with us and the owners so all the stakeholders that you need to pay attention that's the corporate responsibility so these are the four main principles of corporate governance of course there are many many books many courses, many uh, opportunities to, to go deep on that. But one of very, one of very important uh, way to, to see what the other companies are doing, the, the companies that are already 100 years, 120 years, uh, or going to the, the, why they are surviving, what they did to have this, to achieve this, this long life uh, of the companies. And of course, uh, you, first you need to have the purpose where I'm going to, to, to go in my future. Uh, you have uh, to have values. If you don't have values, you cannot survive in this company. Of course, there are people that don't have values and survive, but no, I, I'm saying the good people that are, have values and are looking for good things. Uh -huh. uh, 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 and uh, in that, you need to be proactive, proactive, looking to see what is going. One very important uh, uh, organization that help mainly the family business is the family FBN, F Family Business Network, is one of the associations that was founded in 1995 too, uh, uh, in the IMD in Switzerland, and all uh, nowadays are all around the world. And uh, if you have a family business, uh, doesn't matter your your size, it's important to be associated to the FBN because then you'll see 
opportunities and to see other companies what they are doing. So this is a, a big picture. But of course, there are many organizations that are uh, giving us uh, uh, new information. You you have uh, IFC. You have uh, uh, the the what I say the the OECD. You have the FMO uh, that uh, the 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 Development Bank of the Dutch Development Bank. Uh, they are always issuing new uh, new papers about what's corporate governance in families and in uh, public companies. Uh, you need to 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 read a little bit about how how we go uh, for the future, like prosperity. Uh, from Colin Mayer is a good book to give you an idea. Uh, you have uh, also uh, the uh, Arari uh, Sapiens and Twenty One Lessons for the Twenty One Century that give us all. A, a big picture of what's going on in the future and now. Uh, so, and of course, the institutions like IBGC, NICD in the States, and IED in, in, in Great Britain, that are organizations that help and give the, the, the information that are necessary to, to perform better as board members, and to, with that, the, the company can uh, follow a best route for the survival in this world that are changing so quickly, and you need to be prepared to everything. And that, that's interesting. Let me point that because someone can say, well, it doesn't make sense asking to look for past success companies. The landscape changes a lot. The business arena is totally different now. We need to have you need to have another reference. No, but there are some values that are universal. Doesn't matter if the company is in the US, Europe, or Brazil, or old or new company, right? There are some principles that you need to follow. Makes it. I think it, that yeah. we were talking about, right? The velocity of everything is changing so quickly, so quickly that you need to survive in this jungle of this world to be very active, to be looking what's going on. If you don't look what's going on, not only your market, not only the, the environment that you have you are, where you survive or you, you live, but if you don't have a, a broader uh, view of what's going on in the world, it's very difficult that you will survive. So no doubt it's necessary to be quick, and, uh, atten and, and pay attention, and how you pay attention. Reading and looking and seeing what's going on all around your country, your city, your company, and what's going on. Because today, the, the, the war in Russia uh, can prejudice companies because of the raw materials are not coming. Mm -hmm. and, and several points that you need to be uh, uh, looking for if you want to survive as a company. Mm -hmm. Good. Fogini, can you elaborate a little that the comment? Because I really love in that course with Wanderlei and uh, in Selinch, right? A certification process I did there with him. And you make a speech talking a lot about the diligence. What really means diligence for you? Listen, uh, it's not only to say the right things and not only to look for the right things. You need to be diligent. What's what it's what I said, and I repeat that very frequently. To be diligent is to pay attention in absolutely uh, conscious. If you are conscious about your responsibility, and as a board member or even as a C level. You have you need to be responsible for what you are doing, and the only way that you are responsible for doing what you are doing is to be diligent, is to be attending what is necessary uh, very deep, because if not, we will not have the opportunity 
and in the future somebody will judge you in the future about something that you did today so diligent for today and diligent looking forward the future that's a good message for sure i, I really like to talk with you for jenny appreciate a lot your time you know your availability to be here talk with your listeners and now please what are your final words the final words is is very very optimistic uh, uh, i don't give up even if i have many problems in my in, in my uh, uh, my front uh, because tomorrow is another day and tomorrow is another day is the way that you can find the solutions for you as a person as a human being and for your companies and for the board of directors to find how to be transparent how to be diligent how to be to to have the accountability of what you are doing and to how to have the social and corporate responsibility with that i'm always optimist uh, optimist because the in the long range the good things will be will survive and the bad things will die good good imagine thank you for it was a pleasure to have you here my pleasure good luck for you and we'll be in touch thank you for this opportunity bye bye Thank you.